sermon text for this morning is from the gospel lesson that was just read. The title for my sermon this morning is True Freedom. True Freedom. And I guess that's what all has been on all of our minds this last weekend during the 4th of July experience. But what does it mean to you to be free? For some people, it means the avoidance of all responsibility. If I don't have any responsibilities, then I am free. Maybe it's the elimination of all constraints, all the things that are seem to holding us back to experience freedom, to do one thing with any kind of regard, without any regard to the effect of others or society at large. I can, one of the classic ones is that taxpayers dislike the IRS. They're the thing that's keeping them from being free. The weary homeowner dreams of retiring to a condominium where life may be great, I don't know, or to a place where they can really get into living their last days out. Freedom, we say to ourselves, is the absence of responsibility. But deep down in our hearts, I believe that all of us know that that is just a lie. For true freedom is not the absence of responsibility. We only have to look around at our society today to see what freedom from responsibility has done to so many people, and especially to our nation. We can see moral bankruptcy. We can see misery all over the United States at this time. But true freedom... True freedom has several things about it that I want to share with you this morning. True freedom is always yoked to responsibility. Now, there's that word again that Pastor Lisa was talking about, being yoked, being tied together, because true freedom is yoked to responsibility. Many people complain about being yoked to a spouse or being yoked to a family or being yoked to a mortgage. There are a lot of things that we could be yoked to. But if we were honest, though, we would confess that taking on that yoke of responsibility was the best thing that ever happened to us. It actually would force us to, stand, to have the abilities to understand things and to take it to the utmost level. And that is a paradox, paradox that is found in our gospel lesson today when it says, take my yoke upon you. And this is Jesus talking. And learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. As you heard earlier, a yoke is usually a wooden frame used to harness oxen or, or horses. Two animals then would be bound together. They would share the load equally as they plowed through the fields. And Jesus knew all about yokes. He had spent many hours helping out in the Joseph's carpenter shop. A good carpenter would custom make yokes carefully, and they would measure them very carefully, measuring the animals. The yoke had to fit perfectly. If it didn't fit perfectly, it would harm the animals. It would neither be too big, it wouldn't be too small, it would be just right. True freedom for the believer is being yoked with Jesus Christ. When the going gets rough, he is there to encourage us to continue on. He is there to share the load. He is there to help us make it through whatever we're going through in life to the other side. Jesus told his followers, take my yoke for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How can a yoke make us free? The truth is that everyone here, everyone listening to us, everyone watching this YouTube video is yoked to something else. People who have no responsibility have often yoked themselves to, to their own self-indulgent stuff that's going inside of them. People who are not yoked to Christ become yoked to the unhappiness in the world. And this brings me to the second truth about freedom. True freedom really is delivery from sin. While a preach, on a preaching assignment, assignment in Africa, David Wigington noticed how people were carrying things on top of their heads. Maybe you've seen them carrying large and heavy items on the top of their heads. And this process become, became a fascination to David. And while in the villages of Sierra Leone, the rest of Africa, he asked the villagers to show him how to carry a heavy load on his head. Well, they began with a very small item. 
And he told him that this is what we start out with teaching our young people how to carry things. It's a, it's a, it, it, they, maybe they would put on the, to, the, the head of a toddler and the small children would begin to learn the process as they, soon as they learned to walk of how to carry things on their heads. They were given an empty container and they were sent down to the local pond to bring back some water. Well, more times than not, there wouldn't be any water in the tin but they were slowly learning the process of how to do it, how to get the water, how to put it on their head, and how to carry that burden. Then they graduated to larger and larger containers. And they, then they brought to Wigginton a boy who was about 11 years of age, and Wigginton got down on one knee so that he could be on the boy's level. And two men came by, and they lifted the sack off of the boy's head onto Wigginton's head. And that should have been his first clue where it took two men to lift this package off of that 11-year-old boy's head. When they placed it on Wigginton's head, it was about 75 or so pounds. He could not even hold his head up straight. He couldn't even walk. So the two men quickly removed it, and the villagers laughed silly, silly at, this, at, at this little American who didn't know what he was doing. But back in the capital city in West Africa, Wigington learned of a lady whose regular employment was that of being a human delivery truck. Now, in the capital city of Freetown, she was to deliver engine blocks from one repair shop to other repair shops. Four men would lift the engine block onto a tray, and then they carried the tray over and put it on her head, and off she would go to that other repair shop in town carrying that enormous weight on her head. One day this lady came to her destination and there was no one there to receive the engine block. And there she had this heavy load on her head and no one was there to take that load off of her head. She waited as long as she could possibly wait until the weight was getting to her and the engine block was getting to be so heavy and it was still on her head and so she didn't know what to do. But after thinking about it, she decided to remove the block herself. In doing so, she broke her neck and died. The people of the villages and the city understood the importance and significance of helping each other with the heavy loads that they have to carry. There is a weight that we are all carrying around right now. There is a weight that is so heavy that we cannot move it by ourselves, and we have to have help. The load is so heavy that our friends cannot remove it. The, our families cannot remove it. It is the weight and it is the burden of sin in our lives. The good news is that there is someone here today, especially with a specialty of lifting heavy burdens. His name? Jesus. He has come to lift the weight of burden and sin. It is the weight you cannot lift yourself, but his specialty is lifting that burden off the heads of those who have come to him in faith. True freedom is the deliverance from sin. In his book, Rebuild Your Life, Dale Galloway way, tells of an experience that he had when he was a young man. And he was a custodian in a church while he was in a college in Illinois. One Saturday, he was cleaning the sanctuary, and he had the windows open for ventilation, and a young bird flew into the sanctuary. Once inside, the bird flew around, and having a big time looking that huge church over, but then all of a sudden the bird realized that he was trapped in the midst of that sanctuary, that there is no way out. At one time the adventure was so exciting and new, and then all of a sudden it was not so exciting, and it was not so new. He was trapped. So he began to frantically fly from one end of the church to the other side of the church, looking for a way out of that church building. After a while, he went up the, went up the stairs into the balcony, and he was up there for a little while, and Dale ran up after him to try to rescue him, to try to take him and to try to save him from his peril. But the bird flew away again. Just as he reached to pick up the little bird, it took off several times as Dale tried to rescue him. Back downstairs, Galloway went 
to one end of the church to the other, following that bird, trying to find a way that he could rescue the bird. Up against the top of the window it hit, trying to escape, no way out, falls to the ground in utter exhaustion. He was not dead, but he must have felt half dead. And Galloway bent over, very gently picked up the bird, took it to the window, and the bird flew away. The bird flapped his wings and he left for a new life and was flying to higher heights. I guess my point this morning is that many of us are broken. Many of us are torn inside, whether it be because of the circumstances of the day or whether it be something in our families or something in our past or fearful about things that are coming in the future. We're torn apart. We're torn apart emotionally trying this way and trying that way to find a way out, to find a solution. But then one day, and usually it happens when we are completely exhausted, not knowing what to do or, or how to get out of that situation, we fall into the loving hands of our Heavenly Father. And at that time, God picks each one of us up he nurses our wounds with his love. He holds us close to his heart. He heals all of our brokenness and makes us whole. God has set us free to fly to the new heights of the ministry in our lives again. How is it with you? Are you feeling free this morning? Or do you have burdens that you're carrying around? Do you need to take Jesus' yoke, and let him yoke with you? Are you really feeling free? As a nation, we're trying to give thanks to God. In the midst of all the turmoil we're going through, we need to give thanks to God for the nation in which we have and the freedoms that we do have. You and I are free only, though, if we are yoked to Christ in the midst of all of this. We are free only if we have found rest and freedom in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God be with you and may he help you to relinquish the burden you have to Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.